almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power
that my husband and I could no longer manage ourselves. We have another child, Lucy, who is 12, and we could no longer keep our home stable or safe. We were having to call um, 911 on a regular basis, followed by Easton being taken to the ER, where they would give him meds to calm him down and then send him back home for it to happen all over again, sometimes twice in a 24-hour period. It was an exhausting and dark time, and we were heartbroken as we watched our son suffer and as we watched our traumatized daughter uh, become more and more emotionally fragile. And we were so frustrated when no one could help us understand what was going on with him or how to help him. So we cried out to God for help, and he provided. And recently, the big thing that we have been praying for for a little over a year has finally come to pass. Thank you, Lord. A residential placement for Easton where he will live and go to school and finally receive the support and therapy that he needs. This is a big deal, and I praise God. He provides for our needs, and he opens the door in his perfect way and timing. And he also provides before he opens the door. And I want to share with you how God some of the ways God provided for me in the waiting, because that's the hard part, right? Standing in the middle of the battle, but God providing in the midst so we can say, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord Jesus, and I trust you. So in the waiting, God provided guidance and care through his word. In the height of Easton's behavioral crisis, I was frantically praying to God to intervene. I just thought, I'm going to be persistent, and God is going to move. That was my plan. And being persistent is a good thing. But the Lord, in his loving kindness, gave me a word that prepared me and helped me to keep trusting him through the waiting period. My small group at the time was praying for me, and one of the women thought she may have heard a special insight or a word of knowledge for me. So I brought it to the Lord, and as I was praying very clearly, Jeremiah 29, 11 came into my mind. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And I was really excited. It's like God's about to do something. And then he prompted me to read the verse in context. And for those of you who don't know, God does make this awesome promise to the Israelites, but then he tells them that they're going to be in exile for a really long time. But they should keep doing life and thrive. And I knew that was what God was telling me, to prepare for the long haul, but to thrive in him, not to live in defeat. Good things were coming and I needed to trust him and wait. And even though that wasn't really what I wanted to hear, I am so thankful for that guidance that prepared me and gave me strength. Isaiah 58, 11 says, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail, amen. In the waiting, God provided faith and assurance in personal prayer. Things really took a turn for the worse. Easton was turned away by every appropriate placement in New York State. And then he was permanently expelled from school after a very bad episode there. So he was sent home without any services. Um, And there are no other schools in this area that can accommodate him. There's a staffing shortage for home instruction, so there was no education, no therapy. All supports were lost indefinitely. And then this was followed by more denials from out-of-state placements. And things just looked really hopeless. And I remember just being stunned, and I fell before the Lord in tears. And I often ask the Lord to help me to trust him, which is a great prayer, by the way. But in this moment, the Holy Spirit was inviting me to take a step of faith and make this declaration. I trust you, Lord Jesus. Things look really bad right now. But I know that you are at work and that nothing can stop your plans. I will wait in confidence. And the Lord just blessed me and covered me with peace and assurance. 
And I had to keep praying that prayer as I waited, but the Lord just continued to cover me with his faith and assurance. Because when we speak the truth about him, the truth sets us free. Amen. And in the waiting, this is the last one. God provided strength and refreshment through praise. And I love what Pastor Nikki Gumbel says about waiting. He says, until God opens the next door, praise him in the hallway. And when I praise Jesus, my soul is refreshed as I remember his promises and that he is greater. And I couldn't do this alone. There were times where I felt so weak, but my church family, my small groups, the worship team, they all helped me to keep focusing on Jesus and praising him in the battle. And I want to encourage you, if you are waiting for God to open a door, let the people around you who love Christ help you to draw near to him, help you to praise him as you're in the hallway. He's worth praising through any circumstance because everything we need is in Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the earthly tangible provisions. He knows what we need. Thank you, God. But those are temporary What will never perish or fade is God's ultimate provision, the treasure of his son Jesus and his salvation from death to new life. I'm still learning to live out this truth, but I pray that through each battle, God will bring me closer to living it out more fully. When I have Jesus, I have everything. Thanks for letting me share. I'm gonna pass it to Michelle who's going to lead us in this beautiful song where we all get to make that declaration. When I have you, Jesus, I have everything.
captivated by that image. That I would come crawling back out of the filth, God. I called and somehow you answered. greater truth than that. Have you heard his call? Have you heard his call on your life? That a father who loves you would draw it near again and again and again. And that no matter how many times you've said no, he doesn't take no for an answer that he keeps showing up and says, if just once, if just once I knock on that door and you open it, you will be mine. What greater love than the love of a father, creator, redeemer, sustainer, source, the fount of every blessing in our lives. Do you know that old hymn? Would you sing it? Sing it with me. Oh, come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Oh, streams of mercy never Call for songs of loudest praise And teach me some melodious song Song by flaming tongues above Fix the mountain, fix upon it Mount of thy redeeming are fixed upon it and I, I don't turn from the left I don't turn from the right but my eyes are fixed on Jesus the rock the mount that is immovable in an ever shifting world thank you Lord Psalm eighty one sixteen says but he would feed you the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. The next song we're going to sing is called Honey in the Rock, and it is about the sweetness of God's provision. And Psalm 81 borrows this imagery from the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, where Moses uses honey in the rock to describe God's care for the Israelites through their desert journey. Verse 13 says, He let them ride over the highlands and feast on the crops of the fields. He nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. And I want to just borrow a few words from John Tillman from Park Forum. He says, The rock implies our suffering and our sojourn, but it also implies a sure foundation of Christ on which we may stand. Honey from the rock is an image of extravagance brought out of scarcity. Honey is a treat, an extra. It provides energy and health, but it chiefly is pleasurable and even indulgent. The grace and mercy that we receive through the gospel of Christ is honey from the rock. It goes beyond satisfying some need or law or rule. Christ pours out upon those who follow him extravagant grace that goes beyond a dry court ruling of not guilty. It is the passionate, running embrace of a father receding back a son from the dead. Seek for Jesus in your pain, in your desert, in your struggle, for it is only from him that you can receive not just sustenance, but honey from the rock. 
Amen and hallelujah. Will you sing this with me? There's honey in the rock, water in the stove, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry, not that I know. Everything you need, I've got. There's honey in the rock. some time um, that you're going to be wandering in the wilderness 
but I promise I will provide. And so I was talking with uh, <clears throat> my friend Jesse the other day, and her, her mantra right now for life is manna. Uh, just where, where is my daily bread? Because so much of life is, is uncertain. Does anybody out there feel like life is uncertain right now? Yeah? Three of you? Okay. I'm glad that the rest of you are very confident. Uh, I find, I think that I am a confident person, but, but not in where life is necessarily going. So much of it is out of my control. So much of it feels like spending time in the wilderness. at a conference on Friday night um, and one of the most most powerful things in the message that uh, Pastor Stephen Holly was talking about <clears throat> was that he said the church uh, the church just has to pray like really really pray he said because what prayer does is put an uncertain future into the hands of a very certain God yeah, yeah, yeah you can clap for that I know I'm happy about that. When I look around and I, and I look at what's going on in the world, in the Ukraine, in Africa, in persecution, in the Arabian countries, in China, when I look at what just happened yesterday here so close to home, the kid from my high school I think it's so it's so uncertain we just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring but God does there's nothing that catches him off guard and I hope that if you needed to hear that tonight that you take that from this place with you let it sink into your heart that God is certain of the future. He knows where the end is. And he's already won. And so all we have to do is, in this moment, to take our daily bread, to look for provision for today. In certain hope, that our certain God has a certain tomorrow. And so we're going to sing a, I hesitate to call it a classic, but uh, at this point in contemporary music, it kind of is. And it just says, this is the air that I breathe. This is my daily bread that you give to me. Your very word spoken to me and over me. pray that my friends you would lift your voices as we as we declare this truth and this cry to God God we are desperate for you Jesus we are lost without you we just saw that play out yesterday that without you people are so so lost So God, fill up our lungs. Give us fresh wind. This is my daily bread. 
else know that truth in here tonight I know that many of you have probably been to church a lot but I want you to know that coming to church does not save you singing songs does not save you Serving on a worship team does not save you. It's Jesus. It's only Jesus. And so this, this is one of those moments that comes every once in a while. God is drawn close, like we sang about earlier. He is, he is drawn near. So I don't know where you're at with your life today. I don't know whether you have a personal relationship with him or not. And if you already do, then I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to just pray for the people who don't. But if you have never said yes to God, I want you to just close your eyes. freak out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you to come forward or raise your hands or dance or anything. But I just want you to pray with me. Just say, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to have a real relationship. I want to have something that gives me eternal significance. God, I know that you love me. And even if I don't always feel that, I know that it's true. And I believe that you sent your one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for me so that I might be restored to relationship with you like it was always meant to be. And God, because of that, I'm going to give you praise. I believe in what you've done, and my response to that is to seek your face, to try and look more like you, every day in the way I love my neighbors in the way I love my spouse in the way I love myself in the way I love those who are different from me Father I'm grateful for your love just tell you, if you're here in this place and you prayed that prayer with me, reach out to me some other time. It doesn't have to be tonight. You can find me 
here on Sunday mornings. You can find me all during the week here at church. You can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Whatever you need, you can reach out. I'll give you my cell phone number and we can go to lunch and have a, have a chat. I would love to talk to you about Jesus. Nothing excites me more. Jesus and music. And if you're online today, uh, I would extend the same offer. You can reach out to one of our hosts in the chat or if you'd prefer to talk to me personally, anytime. As I look around the world, there is no more important thing that we can do than to share the love of Jesus Christ with other people. It's the only thing that will create real change, real change in our communities, in our lives, in our families, in our marriages. It's where we have seen real, lasting change. pray with me one more time. God, this is a special moment. We thank you for being here with us. That you have filled up our lungs. That you have given us life and creation. And that you sustain us through our days. And that even in death, you have made a way. We say, we call you bondage breaker because you're handing out the prison keys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
next part is for anyone who made a decision tonight. It says, I have decided to follow Jesus and there is no turning back. The cross is before me and the world is behind me. There is no turning back. So if you made that decision tonight, I pray that you would begin to sing this from your heart as you cry to God. And if you've known Jesus for a long time, I pray you sing it all the louder because you've known it for a long time. That there is no turning back. There is no change once you've gone there. You will never be the same. Would you lift your voices with me? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. There's no turning back. for a night that we can join our voices and sing together. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know that today we have given God glory. Amen? Amen. As you go from this place, I pray that you would go in that confidence and in that knowledge that there is a Father who loves you. There is a Father who will provide for everything you need day <coughs> to day. And I have heard that there are goodies in the back. I haven't gotten, a, I've been so busy, I haven't gotten a chance to really check them out, but I'm excited to. And hopefully we'll get to talk with some of you as well. Let me just pray real quick over us. God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your presence in this place. God, would you go before us? Would you go behind us? Would you go on all sides of us so that we would be enveloped in your love, that when we feel surrounded, it is actually surrounded by you. That when we see shadow, it's just the shadow of your wings and that we would know that truth. All God's people said, amen, amen. amen.